Hey, I'm Imran Sadiq, Web Squadron, and we love to help you, your clients, and your businesses get the most out of your websites. And of course, for your business generally with marketing and branding as well. We use Elementor Pro. It is the best page builder out there, and we definitely recommend it. And I want to say welcome to all of our listeners on podcasting. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can obviously see me and my face and my finger movements. And I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. Now, today we're talking about graphical representation on your website or your social media. In the old days, I used to use Photoshop a lot. I don't use that that much now, mainly because of the monthly cost. If you are fine investing in that, go for it. But I found it was just starting to get a bit pricey for me. But I did used to use Photoshop a lot. Been using it since 2007 with my lovely digital tablet. Enjoyed it. Love doing lots of creative art and stuff. But when it comes to the imagery on your website or your social media posts, you could be forgiven for just taking an odd photograph, cropping it a little bit and then sticking it online. And then you might put some lovely impactful headlines or statements with a link to your website or wherever. And you might go, well, that's it. That's fine. That's all I need to do. In fact, I've seen a lot of web designers out there where they have photos of them where they're kind of gone away on a trip somewhere and it's just a photo of them standing in front of a building or next to their friends. And they stick that a lot on social media, but they're advertising themselves as web designers and whatever. And the bulk of their photos tend to be of them just walking around. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can maybe try and make them a little bit more interesting. And this is where I'm going with this. Now, I just want to quickly put a caveat in here. Now, when you do do social media or postings, you don't really want to be just focusing on your business. So you don't want to be saying, hey, look, use me. We're a web designer. This is what we do. This is what we build. Of course, you want to show natural things like you're going to the park, you're going shopping. What are you eating? What's your children doing? What are you doing with your pets? Show that you are human. You know, you enjoy life. People will probably relate, resonate and connect with you and hopefully trust you as well. What I'm getting at is that when you have images on your website or your social media, do they connect back to your brand? Okay, so that's really what I want to get to here. And if you're still listening, I'm sorry if you kind of went, where are we going with this? I'm talking about your graphical representation. So if you've got a website and your brand is, say, um, orange, let's just say, okay, and your website is mainly white with orange pops everywhere, you know, to really highlight the orange, bits of black, greys, stuff like that. But the focus is the orange that you really want to draw out. And you're then using a lot of images in your website that are yellow and green. You're breaking the orange theme here completely, aren't you? And you, Or even the grey theme, however you've got it doing. And if you're doing a lot of images on your social media as well, it's okay to be natural and show where you are and what you're doing in the world. But there's nothing in there connecting back to your brand as well. Now, please do take note that if you use your social media not to promote your business at all, then do what you want. You don't need to um, do anything I'm telling you to do. Just carry on with your life. But if you are trying to make that connection back to your brand and your business, then maybe inside of your images, you might have a logo. And I don't mean a massive logo. I'm talking about a small logo. Could be like a circular logo, like a favicon or something like that. Or it could be a horizontal logo, whatever you want. And you might have it in the top corner of your images or the bottom of your images along the bottom. You know, you get the idea. So you're going to go with something that kind of connects back. Now, I don't do this all the time on my social media, but nine times out of 10, I will just put the word web squadron. Just so it's there. So if anyone sees the image or the or a quote I've put on the image, and I'll come back to that in a moment, they're going to remember it came from Web Squadron in Rancidic. They're going to hopefully make that connection. And hopefully they will come and visit our website, click the link, or just remember us generally. So let me now just answer my question about graphical representation in three quick steps. Number one. If you've got a branded color theme on your website, try and make sure your images are roughly the same type of color scheme. Okay. Number two, if you're going to do any social media posts, maybe again, 
if they are very strongly connected to your business, because that was the basis of the social media platform anyway, why you set it up, again, make sure the colors are connected to your business. Or number three, if you're not too bothered, whether it's about your business or you, a logo in the bottom corner or the top corner isn't a bad idea. Again, you're kind of reinforcing your brand. Now, when I mentioned right at the start, Photoshop, and even back then when I was using Photoshop, I had to, back then you didn't have a monthly license. You paid for like Creative Suite. You paid six, seven, eight hundred pounds, whatever, for a license, which back then was quite a lot of money, believe me. But you were able to use the solution and you could drag in your image, add your logo, change the colors, do what you want with it. Then you had solutions coming along like GIMP, uh, Photopea came out, uh, you know, and there was other platforms you could use that were more cost effective. But if I was going to recommend any solution out there to you right now, it would be Canva. Canva.com is a powerful, amazing solution. There are limitations to it that I will talk about. But if you're trying to do amazing social media posts, whatever size you want to do, or website images, you know, full screen, whatever size, and you want to have access to videos, um, uh, sounds, uh, images, animated, wording, whatever, Canva is super, super fantastic. I'm not here to advertise Canva to you, but I just want you to know that I cancelled our Photoshop license two years ago. Okay, I might go back into it using an alternate free solution like Photopea if a client sends me a document and I've got to go into Photoshop because of the format. Other than that, and that is very rare by the way, I use Canva. It does everything I need to do to create cover arts for the videos or podcasting or whatever for our website, logos. Do you know how many logos we've built for customers using Canva? You'll be shocked. So many. And you use so many different elements and you tweak them to make them unique. So it doesn't look like Mr. You know, paperclip, clip art kind of imagery. No, we make them unique as much as we can. But what's really great about Canva is that it also has like a freehand tool. So you can actually draw on screen as well. Now, the limitation is it is not as sophisticated as Photoshop was or other solutions in drawing or sketching or things like that. Even layering, there are limitations and deleting stuff. So if you're after a real graphical powerhouse, you're going to have to use a different solution. But if you want to add branding to your, um, your images before you put them on social media or wherever, or even onto your website, you want to tweak the colors to fit more of your branding, Canva is super, super good. And I cannot stress enough the importance of making sure your images connect back to your branding. Okay, um, we, we had a website for a company and their images were nothing like their branded colors. They had very bold colors, blue, red, in fact, it was blue, red, black, and white. They were their branded colors. The images were mainly green and yellow. It was like, are we trying to build a rainbow here on the website? You know, the colors just don't relate. And they always, rec they always kept commenting on a competitor's website. And I kept saying to them, look at the competitor's website. Their brand is black, gray, yellow. Look at their images. They have been very clever in ensuring that their images are very like um, diluted in terms of like, so it's very gray in terms of saturated, sorry is the wrong word, not diluted. They're, they're, they're not too saturated, but they were cleverly saturated a bit, but they ensured that where there was yellow in that image, maybe it's the lights on a vehicle or the clothing someone's wearing like a jacket, they're ensuring they make that pop. So that is popping the focal point your website that we're working on, you got your blue and red logo, but your images are green and yellow. I'm, I'm jumping around the page. What am I focusing on? And even the images they're putting out as well on social media, they just don't relate back to the, the brand. And it's almost like really your brand should have been green and yellow, but obviously they didn't want to do that. And I get why. But if you know that you work somewhere 
And um, let's say you're a lawyer, solicitor, okay? And you are going to be spending a lot of your time in maybe robes or black clothing or dark suits or a dark setting. Whenever you see solicitor websites, they tend to be either in a very open white kind of like, you know, big windows and all that shedding lots of light. Or they're almost in like dark rooms of mahogany and loads of bookcases and library kind of setting. You want to think about your logo then as well. And well, not just your logo. To be honest, your logo can be multicolored. But the branding of your website and what are you getting across has got to kind of be reinforced by the images. That is not entirely true, by the way. Okay, so I'm not trying to say to you, right, go out there and change every image you've got. But it does have to connect because once you make that connection, you are kind of um, uh, reinforcing what people are expecting when they come to your website as well. So if I see a social media post and it's all pink and lovely, right, and most of your posts are all pink and lovely, and when I come to your website and it's just um, black and white, and there's hardly any pink anywhere except for a little logo in the top corner, I'm going to go, oh, your website feels quite cold or um, um, depressing or just um, um, dark or moody or whatever. I was expecting something really vibrant. Just like the other way, if you flip it, if your images are quite dark, and when I go to your website, it's all neon, luminous colors everywhere. Why was that not reflected in your images? So a lot of a lot of what you do out there in terms of graphical representation of your brand in your website and your social media can make a massive difference, okay? And just look at big um, businesses out there, competitors. Look at what they do for their marketing and how clever they are in trying to get across a certain type of a color scheme. Look, um... Uh, if you're in the UK, look at Tesco. Look at look at what look at their adverts. Look how they're very clever on the colours they use, which come back to their brand and their theme. Look at some of the sports shops out there. Okay, they will have multicoloured items in their um uh, in their warehouses, but they are very careful on what they put out there, um, because it's like a shop window. The window of the shop most likely, not all the times, but those that care, most likely will again reinforce the branding and the colour palette of what is the business all about. I hope that makes sense, but I definitely recommend Canva. Okay, canva.com. We pay for the premium version. Uh, it's about £11 a month, which I know is £11 a month, but the extra features we get with canva.com are amazing and we seriously recommend it to anyone in web designing or anything like that as well. And it helps you create web proposals as well. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow if you're watching this on YouTube. And I hope to be back with another episode very soon if you're listening on podcasts. Take care, see you soon.